Welcome to this terrific Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming to you on this uh, terrific Tuesday from the Newsmax headquarters in Midtown Manhattan, from the uh, Question Tequila Studios. Today we are well fortified and resupplied by our uh, sponsors, and I am grateful for that. And uh, Grateful for you, and uh, before we uh, get to the great show, we got Brett Winterbull coming up in just a bit, talking about all this craziness in the news. And uh, down at the New York Stock Exchange, the market was down 100 this morning. Uh, now it is uh, just about, down just about 10, and uh, the market should be okay here. I think we're all right with what's going on in geographic, geopolitical schemes. And uh, right here on the Bitcoin front, we're at uh, 10,300 and uh, still hovering above that 10,000 mark. Hovering above that mark is the show when uh, Frankie joins us. Frankie, 10 dimes or five burrows, however you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, just uh, don't call me late for lunch nor liquid lunch. <laughs> so uh, what will we be frankly speaking about today? Well, wouldn't you like to know? I but, sure would. Uh, uh, it is something <laughs> that has gotten very little attention. But you'll have to wait about another 35 minutes to find out what oh. it is. Because there is a ton of breaking news out there that is in dire need of some analysis that can only be done as we reach hands across America to the left coast and the one and only Brett Winterbull, the host of the Brett Winterbull Show, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern on Newsmax TV, and a uh, host of a radio talk show that's remarkably successful in his own right. Hello there, Brett. Hey, it's great to be with you guys. Appreciate uh, hanging out with you today. Oh, yeah. Brett, hey, it's John Tobacco. Uh, you know, I want to thank you. First and foremost, uh, Frankie and I are newbies around here, and uh, we inherited the 10 to 12 cultivated audience, uh, at least some of them. And uh, you, you're, you're amazing what you do, and uh, I appreciate you giving a little extra time to help us out uh, in the noon hour. But a uh, lot of crazy stuff going on out there. Oh, yeah. The markets, I think, are doing well. I spent 25 years in the capital markets. All the macro indicators are good to me, and it seems like the left is actually rooting for a recession. They think they can egg it on. It's unbelievable, right? You, you, why would you bet against this economy when, when you consider that Republican or Democrat, everybody's getting a paycheck, liberal or conservative, everybody's getting a paycheck. People are, are doing well for the first time. They're able to spend money. Uh, they're able to get out there, do vacations, buy cars, what have you. I mean, out here on the West Coast, uh, where we are in socialist California, I see so many new cars driving around with the paper plates on the on the front of the car. Uh, it, it's, it's a remarkable thing. And the idea that you've got people rooting for the country's economy to come apart is is it's it's insane uh, but politics is going to be uh you know it's a blood sport and people are going to do what they got to do to sacrifice uh the baby if they have to to try to uh, attain power i i think it's a big mistake to go that way well, I mean, no kidding. I, obviously, in addition to being somebody that's patriotic, you're also rooting for the president to, to win. I think the attitude of guys like Bill Maher, who are openly rooting for all the suffering and consequences mm -hmm. of a recession just for some short-term political gain, uh, to say it's a, a Faustian bargain is, is an understatement. But um, aside from rooting for a recession, are, as good as this economy is doing, aren't there some warning signs? We have a level of government debt and consumer debt that is at a record level. Uh, we're seeing now a movement towards negative interest rates. You have the inverted yield curve, which has preceded mm. all of the previous recessions. Uh, we have a retail sector that is slowly being hammered, a brick-and-mortar retail sector, by all these people buying their goods uh, online and thereby putting a lot of those workers out of work. Aren't there some things that, uh, even as a Trump supporter, that you should be concerned about? I, maybe. I mean, uh, look, I, I, don't, I don't buy my uh, Christmas toys from the Sears Roebuck catalog anymore, mm -hmm. right? But once upon a time, I used to get the Montgomery Ward and the Sears Roebuck catalog and take a marker and circle the toys I wanted. Now you go buy them online. Uh, you, you, you take retail brick and mortar businesses. You can repurpose those locations for something else like apartments or WeWork spaces or whatever it's going to be. The economy is going to adapt. Uh, the, the government is only good at, at, at putting the hammer down uh, in terms of force to stop economic growth or to restrict restrain this or restrain that. The government doesn't create any wealth, uh, despite what Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren want to tell us. Uh, I, I don't buy it for a minute. And in terms of debt, you know, 
We've had debt. We've had debt for a long time. We're going to continue to have debt. I don't think it's a drag on the economy. Personal debt. debt sure, don't overextend yourself. But the banks can tell you when you've taken out enough. Uh, ultimately, I think it's the person's personal responsibility. John Tobacco would know way better than me on this one. But, you know, I, I look at this and I say, for eight years, you had people uh, squirreling away money, people living in their parents' basements, all that sort of stuff. Now you got new household formations and millennials are starting to buy houses. I, where I live, I probably see a dozen pregnant millennials a day, literally just walking around. Th that's all people betting on the future, and that's because of what you've seen in this economic run. We may have a downturn, but, I mean, overall, I think we're on the right track. Hey, Brett, there was some news yesterday. It's funny, too, you're talking about all these Democrats. and what. Uh, in 2017, Bernie Sanders had a million dollars in change in reported income, uh, and he gave 10 grand to charity, but here he is yeah. talking about sure. let's take from the rich and give to the poor, free college, free health care, free everything. Uh, Bernie made a million, he gave out 10 grand. These, the, the, yeah, the, the, listen, hypocrisy. That, that, that's how they are. That's what they do, right? I mean, but what did Beto say? He said that his donation was his public service. Remember that? Oh, my donations, my public service. Frank, you remember back in the 90s, the Clintons donated underwear to, to charities. Clinton underwear. Whoo! I well, would have paid money not to get their yeah, underwear. Hey, no, 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 no. I, yeah, I mean, I, God, wait, wait, wait. there's something special going on with Bill Clinton's underwear. Uh, so I, yeah. I think that's actually a pretty yeah, valuable I think they got donated contribution. To the, I think some got uh, donated to the FBI uh, but, in that uh, investigation. Brett, let, let me ask you... Uh, <laughs> where we're headed in terms of this Democratic presidential race. Uh, they're going to Texas this week. Texas, at least for the last 25 yeah. years, that's the site of the next debate, at least for the last 25 mm -hmm. years has been pretty solidly red. Um, in 2018, it looked like Beto right. O'Rourke was making a push uh, for uh, Ted Cruz's Senate seat. Are we seeing, because of folks moving there from places like New York and places like California where the taxes are too high, are we seeing yeah. Texas... Uh, gradually turning blue, or do you envision it remaining a bedrock Republican state for the time being? This is going to be this going to be so hard, right? Because we have exported so many reprobates from the state of California into Texas with their twisted, weird ideologies. Uh, you've got homelessness now exploding in Austin, Texas. People camping on sidewalks. You would think you're walking through Skid Row in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, Texas has been this huge magnet, and, and people are going to the places where the jobs are. Austin is is a, is a jobs intensive place. It's a tech sector place. And who is it that works in the tech sectors? The goofball weirdo uh, liberals who who don't want to live in San Francisco and step over uh, needles and feces in the streets. So they go to Texas. They have no income tax. They, they got uh, they got a better uh, quality of life there. And what they do slowly but surely, though, is they defile the beautiful state of Texas. I grew up in El Paso. I did. I, I, far west Texas. So far west, it's practically New Mexico. Beto's hometown. And, and I'm telling you, uh, that's always been a hardcore uh, Democrat stronghold. Same with Dallas and Houston. But the rest of Texas was always a, a bastion of normalcy. And the shame of it is they should be turning back California plates at the border. They shouldn't even let them drive across <laughs> on the interstates and send them back back to where they came from because they're coming to wreck the place. We just like they did North Carolina Houston, up in New York. By the way, Houston. <laughs> That's Houston to us. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, hey, speaking of the border, uh, another presidential debate's coming up. They got rid of the kitty table. Um, now apparently we have you know ten of the final adults. Uh, some of them don't want to take their medicine, right. like Bill Warren Wilhelm de Blasio still won't drop out. Uh, but what, what, what can we expect? They, all these people want no borders. All these people want no prisons. All these yep. people want illegal immigrants to vote, and they want to give them everything in life for free. Yep. Uh, can anybody get yep. out of that rut? Biden's eyeballs are bleeding at this point. Well, I point. think what's going to happen. But Biden, Biden his, his eyeball exploded the other night yeah. on the uh, at, at the uh, CNN uh, climate <laughs> climate palooza over there. It was really it was really something to see. I, I think they're going to get they're going they're going to bum rush Joe Biden. They're going to gang tackle him. They're going to do what they got to do to make him look mortal. Right. I, I don't put it past uh, Bernie Sanders to get on all fours behind him as Kamala Harris pushes him off the stage, <laughs> and, and then Elizabeth Warren, you know, looks disapprovingly uh, at, at them when they do this. Uh, they have to they have to crush him. He has to get crushed.
And I think what's going to happen is Kamala thinks the magic is calling him a racist again. Bernie's going to think that the magic is selling his socialism. And Elizabeth Warren's going to stand there like the reasonable Harvard professor who's like saying, look at all this partisanship. We need to fix problems with my acres of regulation. Uh, uh, it, that, that, that's what's going to happen. This is an opportunity for Elizabeth Warren to, to do the breakout. People know who Bernie is. People know who Kamala Harris is. But this is the shot for Elizabeth Warren to decide it's not Joe's party anymore. It's my party now. Do candidates like uh, whichever Castro brother is running, Joaquin or Julian. Fidel or Julian, <laughs> um, do, uh, do, 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 do the, does the Castro candidate and Beto O'Rourke enjoy any sort of a home field advantage because this debate is in Texas? No. No, no right. at this debate, but uh, in terms of a home field event, no, Beto, Beto's a space cadet. He's Napoleon Dynamite. I mean, nobody takes him seriously. Uh, and, and, and Julian Castro, I mean, you know, what, what's he going to bring? He, he's going to try to be this reasonable guy, but there's no spark or electricity there. Uh, none, none of it. I mean, he's got, he's got all the excitement of Tim Ryan. <laughs> and, and all of the downside. Steyer's going to be there in October. That's going to be fun when Tom Steyer shows up, right? That's going to be great. That's when Tim Conway comes in the room, you know, <laughs> speaking of Tim's. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the last in the first debate, I thought it was appalling. I was cracking up laughing when, uh, like, all these candidates were trying to speak Spanish like Cory Booker's Spanish mm -hmm. was, I talk to people who speak Spanish and they're like, it's more insulting that he's doing it to pander than how bad he actually did it. Um, and I mean, does Beto have any edge there? He's not even Spanish, but can he speak Spanish maybe? <laughs> he he can speak Spanish, you know. He, he he has he has workable Spanish there. He's not he's 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 Irish as a Kennedy. Uh, so what I would recommend is that if like Elizabeth Warren or somebody wants to speak Spanish, just bust out the old smartphone and use one of those translators and be like, "I'm going to raise your taxes," and then just play it into the microphone uh, so that they understand. Uh, I don't know that the speaking of Spanish is a particularly effective thing. Remember back in in 2016 when Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz kind of went at it for about a minute. And a half and everybody was perplexed right. uh, you know it's it it it, it kind of rings hollow and it's it really is pandering after a while all right i want to thank uh brett winterbill for joining us and uh keeping some of his audience with us hopefully all of the that audience and uh, we will care for them well brett and uh for those of you who speak a little spanish if any of those democrats get in tu estas pagando back after this Thank you, gentlemen. That was fun.